one of most intense typhoons ever recorded hits Philippines. One of the most intense typhoons ever recorded tore into the Philippines on Friday, triggering flash floods and ripping down buildings as millions of people huddled indoors. Super Typhoon Hai Haiyan smashed into fishing communities on the central island of Samar, about 600 kilometers southeast of Manila, before dawn on Friday with maximum sustained winds of 315 kilometers an hour. The strength of the wind made it one of the four most powerful typhoons ever recorded in the world and the uh, most powerful to have made landfall, according to Jeff Masters, the director of Meteor Meteorology at U.S. based Weather Underground. Masters said he expected the damage in Guion, the fishing town of about 40,000 people. That was the first to be hit after Haiyan swept in from the Pacific Ocean to be catastrophic. Perhaps the greatest wind damage any city on Earth has endured from a tropical cyclone in the past century. Masters wrote on his blog for the weather monitoring website at www.wonderground.com. Communication with Guinan was cut off immediately after Haiyan hit, and the Civil Defense Office said it was too early to give an assessment of the damage there. But in Tacloban, a nearby city of more than 200,000 people, streets were flooded and some buildings were torn down, according to footage broadcast on ABS-CBN television. Haiyan had maximum sustained winds on Friday morning of 315 kilometers an hour, in the gusts of 379 kilometers an hour, according to the U.S. Navy Storing Typhoon Warning Center. Masters said the previous record for the strongest typhoon to make landfall was Hurricane Camilla which hit Mississippi in the United States with winds of 190 miles an hour in 1969. Preparing for Disaster Philippine President ben Benigno Aquino on Thursday warned his countrymen to make all possible preparations for Haiyan. To our local officials, your constituents are facing a serious peril. Let us do well we can while has not yet hit land, Aquino said in a national televised, televised address. Aquino warned areas within the 600-kilometer typhoon front will be exposed to severe flooding as well as devastating winds, while coastal areas may see waves 6 meters high. More than 125,000 people in the most vulnerable areas had been moved to evacuation centers before Haiyan hit. According to the Civil Defense Office and millions of others braced for the typhoon in their homes. Authorities say schools in the storm's path were closed, ferry service suspended, and fishermen ordered to secure their vessels. In the capital of Manila, which was on the northern edge of the typhoon's path. Many schools were closed amid forecast of heavy rain. Philippine Airlines, Kipfu Pacific, and other carriers announced that the suspension of hundreds of flights, mostly domestic but also some international. State meteorologist Romeo Cadillus say on Friday, then Haya was traveling quickly at 39 kilometers an hour and would travel across the country towards the South China Sea throughout Friday. One particularly vulnerable area in Haiyan's path was the central island of Bohol, the epicenter of a 7.1 magnitude earthquake last month that killed 222 people. At least 5,000 survivors were still living in tents on Bohol and they were moved to schools that had been turned into evacuation centers. 
Other danger zones were the poor cities of Cagayan de Oro and the Iliquin on the southern island of Minjano, where flash floods induced by tropical storm washing killed more than 1,000 people in December 2011. The Philippines is battered by an average of 20 major storms or typhoons each year, many of them deadly. The country also suffered the world's strongest storm of 20, 2012, when Typhoon Bolfa left about 2,000 people dead or missing on Mindanao Island in December. The government and some scientists say to, uh, have said climate change may be increasing the ferocity and frequency of the storms. Masters said warm waters of the Pacific Ocean were an important reason for the strains of high end. It had very warm waters that extended to great depths, and the favorable upper level winds that acted to ventilate the storm, allowing large amounts of air to get sucked in near the surface and get carried away. He wrote in an email to AFP. But Master said it was uh, pre premature to blame climate change for high end. This historical records of typhoons and hurricanes is too short and of too low quality to say if climate change may have played a role, he said. Uh, Shelton and Lambert win again at CMA Awards. The Country Music Association Awards continue to show its love for Miranda Lambert and Blake Shelton on Wednesday night while giving a nod to new duo Florida Georgia Line and doling out a few more rewards to Taylor Swift. Lambert won her fourth straight female vocalist of the year award while her husband, Shelton, won album of the year and uh, male vocalist. The category he also won for the fourth year in a row. Uh, Florida Georgia Line took two early awards to join Swift. Kate Herbert and Tim McGraw topped the early winners list. I really didn't think, think this was going to happen this year. Never say before thinking each of the other nominees. The husband and wife have been favorites of the CMA 6,000 voters for the last three years, and Wednesday is no different. Sheldon's album of the year win for Based on the True Story was a bit of a surprise a year after taking in turn of the year. I have mentioned earlier today that if there was an award that would mean the most to me tonight, it would be album of the year, said Sheldon, getting serious after jokingly snatching his trophy from presenter Cheryl Crow. Florida and Georgia Lions Tyler her burned and Brian Kelly scored single and vocal duo of the year. Their quick quick tall, quick tally was more proof that circle broad country movement is a sign of the movement in mainstream country. SGL kicked up the show performing a fist pumping medley with Luke Bryan and very quickly returned to the stage to take the trophy for single of the year of the cruise, remix featuring Nelly. They also played the new song, One Here. It's been a constant thing out here. We've been trying to wrap our minds around what's going on, Herbert said backstage. It's been a dream country for us and a huge blessing for us and something we could never, we could have never imagined. Casey Miss Grace who, along with Taylor Swift, led all nominees with six, won the new artist trophy. Best in the field that includes Florida Georgia Line with smart songwriting, a progressive band, and uh, a strong sense of self like country's other top women. Musgraves make an uh, auspicious mainstream country de de debut this year with her album, Him Trailer Different Parts, she attended. This first year for me has just been indescribable, said Ms. Graves, who set a record for nominations for a woman in her first year on the show. Swift tied Florida Georgia Line with two trophies after her Highway Don't Care collaboration 
with Tim McGraw and Kate Urban. One musical event and music video of the year before the show began. Lee Bryce's I'd Drive Your Truck, a rather fallen soldier whose father still drives his truck. One song of the year. A Little Big Town took its second straight vocal group of the year. Swiss Dadder performed a somber, caustic version of her hit Red with Vince Steele, Allison Cross, and Sam Bush, and was given the CNA's Pinnacle Award. The award goes to artists who take country music to the worldwide audience. Garth Brooks is the only previous winner. He won in 2005. The CMA brought a star studded welcome, welcoming group out of the stage for Swift, including uh, George Strait, Roscoe Flatts, T. McGraw, and Faith Hill, Kate Urban, and Brad Pisley, all of whom gave Swift a chance to open for them on the road to a teenager. A video salute followed with appearances by all Justin Timberlake, Julia Roberts, Carly Simon, Ethel Kennedy, and Mick Jagger whose appearance made Swift shout. Swift recounted to uh, a call she got out of the blue from her big machine record headed Scott Borchetta when she was 16. He said, can you be on the road in two days to open for Rascal Fats? And I immediately started screaming and said, this must be a miracle, she said. He said, no, it's not a miracle. Our church got fired for playing too long. She added, you've made me feel so special right now. Thank you. Swift also is nominated for her third Entertainer of the Year award, the Knight's Top Honor. Brian and the FGL weren't the only acts teaming up. Collaboration was the theme of the night as Strait and Alan Jackson joined together to salute the delayed George Jones with the rendition of She Stopped Loving Him Today. Hunter Hayes and Jordan Mraz took a tour of the Bridgestone Arena with, while performing Everybody's Got Somebody But Me. But Brown and his band joined in on a growing hot rock can. Trained in country as full fighter, Dave Groho joined the band on drums for new show on High Powered, Day for the Dead. Church earlier turned things up to 11 with the song, the new song on the Outsiders. Host Carrie Underwood and Brad Paisley got the show going on the jovial note as they took the stage with their offing skits. First joking about feuds in music, they got Brian and Jack Braun to hug it out after their mild feud over song trends in Nashville. They joked about Julian Hoff's misguided blackface Halloween costume urging Darius Walker to start his own feud with the singer. The Skewart Obama crew to a Nashville audience that wrote with uh, approval. Then they brought out the guys from the hit show Dark Dynasty and Paradise Robin Thicke's Bloodline with Willie Robertson doing a little trick for Underwood. And in one of the night's most anticipated moment, Kenny Rogers received the CMA's Willie Nelson Lifetime Achievement Award and was saluted by Jennifer Nattles Rocker and Rascal Flatt. Rogers sat on the stage and mouthed alone as Rascal Flatt and just dropped in to see what condition my condition is in. Woo! Wait, 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 wait. Well, that's Louis. No, what did you? To see what condition my condition is in, the crowd helped Rocker sing the gambler and Nattles and Rogers finished the tribute by seeing islands in the stream. It's been a hell of a month, Rogers said. The country music hall of fame last week, that this week. I can't wait to see what's coming next week. Principal Prince Harry and Duke of Edinburgh honor fallen troops. London AFP Prince Harry and his grandfather, the Duke of Edinburgh, 
said played her their respects to Britain's fallen troops on Thursday at the annual opening of the Field of Remembrance in their first joint engagement. The royals walked through the field of around 100,000 crosses painted in the grounds of Westminster Abbey in memory of those who died serving their country. The pair then paid their own tributes, each laying a small cross of remembrance in front of two wooden crosses from the graves of a non British soldiers from the First and Second World Wars. After a two minute silence, the mad veterans and members of the Royal British Legion and the charity's poppy factory, which makes the label poppy sold in its annual appeal. While Duke, 92, opens the field of remembrance every year, it was the first time he was joined by his 29 year old grandson, who has served in Afghanistan as an helicopter commander. The visit comes two days after the death of a British soldier in a suicide blast near Lashkar Gokh in Afghanistan's Helmand province. Lieutenant Colonel Andy Cox said Prince Philip told him sorry about yesterday in reference to the death of 42-year-old warrant officer, class 2, Ian Michelle Fisher. Uh, Cox also said Harry stopped to pat Dad Forshire, Bull Terrier Corporal Watchman V, the mascot of the Staffordshire Regiment. The field of remembrance first opened in 1922 when two crosses were planted. It now opens for 11 days each year for veterans and members of the public to plant crosses in memory of comrades and loved ones. Too fat to fly. French family stranded in U.S. Chicago AFP. A French family who came to the United States for medical treatment said they were stranded in Chicago after British Airways determined their son was too fat, fat to fly. Kevin Chainice, 22, spent a year and a half at the Mayo Clinic for treatment of a hormone disorder which led him to weigh 500 pounds. His mother was near tears as she described the family's problems to local CBS affiliate. We blame British Airways because now they just live it and they brought us here, Christina K. Nice told the station. If they could bring him here with that problem in economy, there was a way to take him back by economy but just get him back home for his medical treatment to continue. The family spent a week in Airport Hotel trying to resolve the matter and, running out of money, had decided their only option is to take train to New York and cross the Atlantic on the Queen Mary cruise ship. Kevin Kennedy requires round-the-clock oxygen, oxygen and medical attention. I'm sure a lot of big people like me or bigger cannot travel because they have the same problem, he told the station, head hanging down as he, as he sat up in bed. This time before living, I knew something would go wrong. A British Airways spokesperson told AFP that its customer service team worked diligently to find a solution. We will always try to accommodate someone if it's possible and safe to do so. Caroline Titmus wrote it in an email. Unfortunately, it is not possible to safely accommodate the customer or on any of our aircraft and the family has been offered a full refund. The airline said it provided hotel accommodation for the family along with guidance and support to help explore other travel options. A spokeswoman woman, uh, for the French consulate told AFP it attempted a mediation with British Airways, but the position of the airline is firm on the security issue. They have provided the family with the names of two lawyers who may be able to help. The Canadian family did not immediately return requests for comments. Five ways your commute could be killing you high gear. 
Americans aren't especially healthy. The machines that they have are coming grow and allowed us to do things our grandparents never imagined. Those same machines have diminished our need for physical expression and, as a result, our well-being. Of all those newfangled devices and gadgets, the television, the laptop, the smartphone, the snodging on deserve, deserves as much praise or blame as the automobile. On the praise side, the benefits of modern vehicles are easy to see. They've allowed us to travel far and wide in search of better jobs and better life. They've allowed us to house dive around so we can enjoy tomatoes, strawberries, and toothpaste rolls all year long. Perhaps most importantly, they bring pizza right to our door. But as the New York Times reports, there are some trade-offs. The newspaper recently published an overview of the many health problems that cars have delivered. Cheese mountain, high blood pressure. Um, a study in Texas found a direct correlation between the length of someone's commute and her blood pressure. Specifically, the farther workers have to travel, the higher their blood pressure. Generally speaking, researchers found that the danger point was a commute of 10 miles one way. A Swedish study conducted by Erika Sandel at Umea University uncovered similar results, though the cutoff point was slightly higher at 50 miles. High blood sugar in the cholesterol. The Texas study revealed that folks who commute more than 10 miles one way and significantly higher levels of blood sugar and um, cholesterol than they can with easier commutes. That's a recipe for disaster and diabetes. Depression and anxiety. Texas researchers also dis discovered that long commutes have a negative influence on an individual mood. Depression and anxiety not only diminish quality of life, but can also dramatically shorten lifespan. Exhaustion and sleep deprivation. A different Swedish study carried out by Eric Hansen of Lund University revealed that the father a worker lives from her place of employment. The greater chance she has of uh, suffering from exhaustion, lack of sleep, and the sickness. AUS study of commuters on the Long Island Railroad yields similar results, which somehow seems worse. It's not the drive driving that's the problem, it's the travel. Obesity. Every study listed here, and many that aren't, found that longer communes mean larger waistlines. That's not surprising since we've heard the same thing about sedentary desk jobs for ages. And as the desk jobs, chances are good that much of the damage couldn't be undone. None of those physical ailments add up to long, healthy lives. Nor do these studies broach the unpleasant topic of what long commutes to do due to the environment. That said, the future isn't entirely hopeless. Americans are driving less, fewer teens are getting licensed, and just as we've seen elsewhere in the world, Americans are moving to cities where walking to work is more frequently an option. Are such healthy trains moving quickly enough to counteract the problems brought on by commuting? We'll keep you posted. Same sex adoption sex frontier for LGBT advocates. Uh, Philip Actol and his partner, Sean Kavanaugh, were in the process of adopting their son, Sabin while living in New York City before same-sex same marriage was legalized here in 2011. By the time the official papers were finalized last year, they had moved to Georgia where laws prohibit gay marriage adoption. During the whole period, we were being watched and observed before the adoptions was finalized, said McDoo a 42-year doctoral student in education. All that period, were, we were considered a family, but only one of us was allowed to adopt him. Zadon, now eight, was a foster child in desperate need of a family. 
30 states ban second parent adoption. Today, an estimated 399 on five, four, six children, 300,099 four, five, six children remain in foster care in the United States according to 2012 statistics from the U.S. Administration for Children and Families. Although are waiting to be adopted and have aged out of the system. We wanted a black boy because they are considered the hardest to adopt and most at risk, like Adrian said. California considers multiple legal parents. In Georgia, where the couple moves because Kavanaugh works for, for the Atlanta Bay Standards for Disease Control and Prevention. 7,669 children are in foster care and 1,645 of them were waiting for homes, according to Ailey's for Adoption, a campaign to allow adoption by lesbian, bisexual, gay, and transgender couples in all 50 states. Its public education campaign is sponsored by the Family Equality Council, a national organization that advocates for LGBT parents and their children. They say, too, that many potentially good parents are being overlooked. A majority of states do not allow adoption by same-sex couples. Right now, there are children waiting to find a forever family, and until we knock down barriers to adoption by LGBT people in every state, we are failing them as a nation. So, Gabriel Blau, Executive Director of the Family Equality Council. Same sex with children are uh, four times more likely than their heterosexual couples to be raising an adopted child, and six times more likely uh, to be raising foster children, according to research from the Williams Institute and LGBT think tank at UCLA. Yet only 90 states and the District of Columbia permit same-sex couples to adopt jointly. Only 13 states in D.C. allow second-parent adoption. In only six days, explicit ban discrimination based on sexual orientation in foster care. The focus on the family, a Christian ministry that is dedicated dedicated to helping parents raise children according to biblical principles, said the push to legalize same-sex adoption was a fundamental flaw. The ideal in the foster care system is to give children what they don't have, a forever loving home with both a mother and a father, spokesman Paul Batura wrote in a statement to ABC News. But by its very nature, same-sex parenting deprives a child for a mother or her father. We believe an adopted child has as much right as any other child to be raised in the environment, environment most likely to promote, preserve, and protect his or her emotional, psychological, and physical well-being. In other words, with a married mother and father. In 2013, the Supreme Court dismantled the Defense of Marriage Act, giving same sex couples who are married the same federal rights as their heterosexual counterparts. But the states still have a patchwork of laws regarding marriage, adoption, taxi, and taxes, and the inheritance laws. Through a law phone in the law, McAdoo Mc and uh, Kavanaugh were allowed to adopt Zadden in a small Georgia country, where one rotating judge interprets the law more liberally. But Zadden only has one parent on his birth certificate. certificate. We were flabbergasted, McAdoo said. His birth certificate will follow him for the rest of his life, and only one of us in in acknowledged. I'm on it, but my partner is not. I wonder what it will mean and what kind of hurtless there are. According to a variety of studies, children raised in LGBT families there as well as heterosexual families. The research is unequivocal that lesbians and gays make good parents, say Aiden Putman 
President of the Donaldson Adoption Institute and author of Adoption Nation. It doesn't mean they do any more than straight parents but when kids need homes. There's zero reason not to do this. Those that are implicitly or explicitly and at adults are, in fact, hurting children because they simply eliminate good potential parent state. If children are our primary focus, then we should be taking steps to include rather than exclude one or more and more adults. An estimated 6 million children are being raised in the United States by at least one LGBT parent, according to a William institution. In, gay, in states like Michigan, there is a constitution banned on same-sex marriage as well as an explicit on one adoption. The couple has been uh, Ken Love Ramirez, director of communication at Michigan State University and the Darvel Love Moran, a pilot for Delta Airlines were legally married in Washington, D.C. and lived in Lansing, the Michigan capital. The lady had not been allowed to adopt their three-year-old son, Lucas. The couple has been together for 11 years and were subject to a thorough home study. A birth mother selected men from other couples, including straight ones, to raise Lucas in an open adoption, he said. Fortunately, we will go to a doctor's appointment, and we were both praying. Present at the birth, Kent Love Ramirez, 43, said, Diego cut the umbilical cord. It was quite a blessing. But only one was legally able to adopt, and a couple refuses to say which one. They have jumped through extra hoops to ensure the non non legal parent has got the ownership rights rather than next of kin. We have recognition at the federal level, but not the state level, left from the state. Honestly, the biggest fear is a situation I hate to imagine. If we were divorced or separate, the non-legal parent would have no rights. Pat Silverthorne, a 53-year-old tech specialist in an elementary school, has no legal rights to her 12-year-old son, Corey. She and her spouse, uh, Sue Anna Clark, 50, Seven were married in Washington, D.C. and live in Preston, VA, where their marriage and adoption is not recognized. We adopted Corey when he was a baby in New York City, but the adoption couldn't be finalized right away because there were issues with the birth father and not being able to find him. So, over to state. Clark, who is Corey's legal parent, says she may retire and no longer has health insurance from her job as a high school teacher. So, now, instead of paying 100 a month, she paid 950 a month for Corey's and her coverage. Sarah Torn, who is working with benefits, cannot include their son because she is not a legal parent. In Virginia, they have done everything that they can to put obstacles in our way, she said. Even if the couple moves across the river uh, to Washington, D.C., where gay marriage is legal, Sarah Torn still would not be able to include Corey on her health policy because he works in Virginia. We have a right to live in Virginia and to continue to live her, she said. We know many, many couples like ours in our world are neighbors, and in school, soccer clubs, we are just parents, like anyone else. We have never encountered a neighbor or a co-worker or teacher who has been anything other than treat us like a family.